All right, guys, I'm back over at uh, Premium Coach Group in Gilbert, Arizona, and I'm working on something a little bit outside their normal uh, routine. It's a 2017 Pace Arrow. It's a really beautiful coach, and, uh, well, I'm doing an inspection on it. Uh, we'll go ahead and get on the roof, take a look at the roof. I've already been up there. I've already seen a few things, and might be interesting to see. Might not be. And then, uh, But, uh, yeah, this thing's pretty much brand new. I think it has, like, 13,000 miles on it. And uh, it's nice. It's well laid out. All right, let's get on the roof. Take a look at it. So we'll go ahead and use the uh, ladder extension. That way we can make sure that we're testing it all out. We'll get up here on the roof and what will we find? Now it might look like a fiberglass roof because it's painted, but this is TPO. So this is a membrane roof. And there'll be a few areas I'll try to point out if I can. Uh, back here, they're just using lap sealant, like a Dicor, and then like a Proflex on top. What I did notice was that on the radius here, even though it's dirty, this side's sealed okay. I got a little bit of a crack right here, so I'd want to reseal the front and the back. I'll do my step test on it. It doesn't feel loose to me. If I look over here, they didn't seal right there. The factory missed that when they built it. So that would need to be resealed. It's not it's not very easy to see, but I guess they did seal it. But that's just gonna be like a silicone or a proflex. But you also might notice, if I can get a good angle on it or not, there's some wrinkles on it. That's going to be pretty normal, especially at the front and the rear. Because this box is not a solid box. It does warp and twist and contort. And so you're going to see that on the, reflected on the roof for sure. Right here, this is probably the worst design skylights out there on the market. There's a very little uh, flange. It actually seals down on this. It's not even flat underneath this flange. It's actually cut back up and cuts back over. So this sealant right here needs to be resealed. You can see how poorly it is. If I get down, it's, pre it's gapped pretty well. But, so I would really like to uh, reseal this entire skylight. This is just going to be Dicor sealant. Self-leveling acrylic again. I mean, the skylight doesn't feel loose. It's just got, I got a lot of flex in it. This uh, sewer vent, a little bit of cracking right there, so I'd want to clean and reseal that. If you go to the full wall slide out, so that's a big slide out over here. There's nearly nothing you can do on a piece of fabric that long to not have it wrinkle or get low spots in it. Other than that, the fabric looks fine. It's doing its job of keeping debris and like uh, snow off the slide out since that's its main purpose but having this is just an acrylic i'm sorry this is just a uh, vinyl fabric so it's going to stretch and deform especially this long and this one has a center cradle support for it and that's going to leave a little roller mark on it so that's all normal looking all right we'll come back over here here we have uh, a fantastic vent. There's a little bit of cracking. Looks like it's probably just voids when they sealed it at the factory. So it was a tiny little seal that was actually holding it in this. So there's an air bubble below it. That's why it cracked. So just a little touch up reseal. Everything's looking fine here. The slide out fabric looks good. These are Dometic slide-out toppers. You can kind of see a little bit of more puckering right there. And uh, this is a problem that a lot of manufacturers have when they're using Phylon. Um, like the fiberglass roofs that Winnebago does. When they roll them over and secure them down, they would get that warping pretty bad in it to the point where they would um, crack. And so that's why most manufacturers stop putting Phylon roofs on. 
if you see my videos, you know Winnebago does their roofs completely different. That is to say, they just get tucked in. So there's a lot of uh, tolerance or free play, so the the the, the pylon doesn't get uh, twisted. It's allowed to shift and move a little bit. That's why Winnebago stuck with it. But the good news is, this is a pretty simple roof. So this looks really good. And that puckering, I wouldn't worry about at all. Not even a little bit. It's a little bit of cracking around the vent again. Again, that feels just like an air pocket. This one, same thing again. So I'd like to reseal the two vent, or the two fantastic vents and the two sewer vents. And now TPO is not rubber, it is a thermoplastic, but it behaves identically to a rubber roof. I prefer TPO over rubber, because TPO will not um, chalk like rubber does. Like this over here, we have a uh, WineGuard Traveler for DirecTV. It's not a bad idea to try to see if that uh, roller's been tearing the roof, and it doesn't look like it has been. It's not supposed to, but you never know. Because it's very close where everything touches. Alright, on the last slide out and in the galley, that topper looks good. This vent should probably be touched up and resealed with sealant. Oh, this looks fine. Oh, I didn't point it out. I did actually rub, check the AC for tightness, and I did check it already. Shroud looks good. Condenser coil looks good. We'll do the next one up here real fast. Just lean it up against it. Shroud is secured. Coil looks good. This one actually has a bigger battery maintainer solar panel than most of these things do. This is going to be from Zamp. But even still, based on its size, we're probably looking at a 35, 40 watt panel. So this is just going to be a trickle charger, usually for the chassis battery, as a battery maintainer. It's not something you could actually charge batteries with or run um, off-grid. It's just another one of those uh, gimmicks, I tell you, manufacturers put on because they can say, yeah, it has solar on it. All right, if we look up here, I haven't pointed it out. There's a lot more twisting that's going on right here. You can kind of see the rippling in that. Again, nothing wrong with it. It's structurally fine. Cosmetically, it might be ugly, but it's a roof. It's not supposed to be beautiful. It's just supposed to be weatherproof, and it's still weatherproof. There's no reason to try to fix that at all. We'd only cause problems. And even if we put a new roof on, it would likely do this anyways. That sealant doesn't look too bad. This is the front cap. Front cap's going to be fiberglass. Always look at these uh, clearance lights. These are notorious for leaking. There'll always be water inside of them. They like to uh, start to break in the sun too. I wish they'd go away from those. I don't know why. It's really surprising to see that on a uh, 17. You can see a little bit of uh, sun burning on the uh, paint. But other than that, we are looking really good, guys. This is a really nice coat. Oh, there's a TV antenna right here. How do you almost miss a TV antenna? Now, this one you can move inside. This is from King Control. These are the more standard TV antennas these days. These don't crank up. And I think that is pretty much the motorhome roof. All right, guys, so there you have it. 2017 Pace Arrow from Fleetwood. And it's a beautiful coach. That roof's in great shape. It's a TPO membrane roof. We'll just use some uh, some clear silicone sealant on the side and some Dicor to reseal those roofs. I need to clean them up. The Dicor won't stick to dirt. I'll usually just use soap and water to clean off the Dicor. Maybe some mineral spirits, but do make sure you clean off all those mineral spirits uh, before you try to seal it or else it won't seal. And definitely don't get the mineral spirits on the, the, the TPO or the rubber roof it can damage it all right guys because i know you like to see them i am going to show you the inside of this uh, but i'll go through it really quick it won't be a long tour i uh i'm really backed up i'm working the weekend just so i can uh, kind of catch up so we'll go through it really fast and uh thanks for watching
All right, so this one's actually a triple slide. You have a full wall slide out on this side. Uh, the leather's impeccable and in great shape. Now, this is not ceramic flooring. This is a uh, vinyl plank or vi vinyl tile flooring. It does have the Freightliner chassis on it. This is 38 foot. It has uh, side view cameras, rear view cameras, Blu-ray. You saw the satellite on the roof. It does have a front a, a uh, front TV. This is the whole control center right in here. So it does have uh, auto generator start on it. Wow, propane and electric water heater has a 2000 watt inverter hydraulic leveling uh it has two acs so this is 50 amp service with two furnaces uh, this is an energy management system yeah it's a nice little system to have you can see what's going on it's a load shed and you actually you can check your amperage too it's good for diagnostics down below there's a multi-function switch that i don't like that fleetwood uses so you can control lots of different functions if i try to do the step cover and do anything it says start the engine Seems silly. This is going to be for the full wall slide out. The front galley slide is going to be right here. Now, all that's kind of interesting, but of course, the layout in this floor plan is actually the nice part because this is two bath or two toilets, but it's going to be the open floor plan on this one that's actually pretty amazing. Now, this dinette, it's a wraparound dinette. This tabletop is actually pretty adjustable, so you can unlock it down here. There. Now you can move this around wherever you want it to be. But also, there's another handle right there. You squeeze, and you can lower it down. Of course, lower it down the rest of the way to become a bed. This uh, sofa right here is, again, an L-shaped sofa. Obviously, the slide wouldn't go in if the sofa was sticking out like that, so the sofa does uh, extend out. I'll put that away for you. This section does flip out into a bed. So you just have two cushions. Do this the right way. There's a handle right there. It'll disconnect it. We just have a little release lever right there. That will put it back. There we go. It locked. So you don't have to pull it out. It still works as a couch just like that. And you have even more walking around space. Over on this side is going to be, of course, the galley. This slide is all by itself. The wood, the cabinet doors are solid wood. But, of course, this is uh, manufactured engineered lumber behind it. Uh, Fleetwood's always lined their cabinetry with uh, charcoal compartment carpet. There's just a flip-up countertop. This is all solid surface countertop. I'm really surprised to see a double stainless steel sink in 2017. But this backsplash is really gorgeous. I like how they did that. This is becoming really, really common. Uh... Basic convection oven microwave, basic propane. So this is propane, heat, water, but the, the ACs are actually heat pumps too. It does have a residential refrigerator. No bells or whistles, no frills, kind of a, a basic refrigerator. But it does have an ice maker. You just have to get your own ice like an animal. Down at the bottom is going to be the central vacuum cleaner. And even though they're more gimmicky, I really do like fireplaces because they're great space heaters. And you have a glass tile back right there. And this is going to be the main TV viewing right here. Fleetwood has their two ACs in the front. That way uh, they're not nearly as loud in the bedroom. So there's no AC in the bedroom. So everything gets ducted back there. But that's why they put these up here. These are going to be mock from Coleman. They did it. We're able to cram in the washer, true washer dryer setup in here. Let's see if the lint trap's good. It's good. But yeah, if you've ever had a combination unit, washer dryer, and you go to this, you'd never ever go back. For sure. We'll go past into this door. This is going to be the mid coach bath. It has its own vanity sink and its own toilet. Now, this toilet is just going to be a standard toilet, just a gravity toilet straight down to the black tank. This is where they hid all the electronics. That is to say the breakers, your surge guard, your 12 volt fuses, and your engine block for the engine heater on the diesel. Back into here, this is of course the bedroom. There's a double pocket door that we just walked past. It's gonna be very similar to that pocket door. This bed is on its own slide. So there's a bedroom slide. You might notice it's articulated a little bit, whereas the, the, bed, uh, the head of the bed's up. That has to be up in order for the slide to come in quite a bit. Because this is actually a pretty deep slide. 
Let me go ahead and put it down for us. Let's see if we're gonna make an avalanche out of pillows. So you can kind of see how deep that slide out really is. So this slide out itself wouldn't come in if this slide out's in. So that the bed has to be up in order for the slides to actually work. This is just the uh, the cushion to turn the dinette into a bed. Very similar to those cushions. Might seem like a hassle to drag around extra cushions with you. You could likely store some of them under the bed here. Now if we go into the uh, other side, that's just going to be the bedroom TV. Doesn't have a lot of closet space, that's for sure. So here we're going to the rear bathroom. You can see the toilet. This is a mass rating toilet. So definitely only use RV toilet paper there. It has its own sink, own countertop, solid surface. So there's a little cool bump up area right here. Of course, here's the shower. Now it's a little bit smaller, but decent sized shower because if it was just ending right there, definitely be a small shower. But it has a cool little bench seat right here. So the good news is there's no bar to hit your head on. So I can step up just fine. It's a small little step. And uh, there's ample headroom in here. So I'm not even anywhere close to <laughs> even the height of the uh, shower surround. I'm six foot. So that's, geez, about another uh, four foot. <laughs> four, another four inches before I even get to the skylight. So if you're a tall person, you definitely... Uh, would feel fine in this shower. And I got a cool bench seat right here. So that's not too bad to be able to uh, sit down and take a shower. And that's me looking up. That's that's a really decent shower. That's very livable. Of course, that's just going to be engine access. Hopefully, you never have to take that off. I forgot to show you guys two things that's interesting with this floor plan that Fleetwood does. One, normally the uh, step up on a diesel pusher to the bathroom is at the back. And so when you're coming around the bed, you inevitably trip when you're walking. You would uh, inevitably uh, trip walking into the bathroom. They put the, uh, the step way back here at the hallway, kind of where a natural step would be. So you don't have to worry about walking around the bed and tripping. The other thing is that there's a little hidey hole behind the TV in the bedroom. So you're going to find your... Central vacuum cleaner attachments, and this is where your satellite receivers would go. Any other thing else you want to put on there? It's a little hidey hole. Very nice. All right. Let's do the uh, obligatory uh, toilet flush. Well, that was very, really, really exciting, guys. Thanks for doing the tour with me. This was a surprisingly nice coach. I didn't have too high hopes when uh, I think Rev Group took over Fleetwood, but it definitely feels like a Fleetwood, looks like a Fleetwood, and it's, it's very livable. I like it. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. Oof. Which one is it going to be? There's a big basement in here. It's like an apartment down in here. That's really good advice. I wonder how many times they hit their head before they wrote that down. Bye! One thing I forgot to tell you guys. I finally... This thing's almost brand new. I haven't really found too much wrong with it. Someone took care of it in the little time they used it. It's really nice. Oh, this is a nice one. 2009 Magna Country Coach. Definitely the nicest one I've ever seen. With the nicest ceiling I've ever seen. Of course, you have ceramic tile throughout. That dinette booth is adjustable. It does not turn into a bed. This sofa does turn into a king-size bed. It's an air mattress. Uh, these tables don't stay there. This sofa also turns into a bed. It is leather throughout. Has four slide outs. 
Really nice solid wood construction. Double sink right there. Double propane burner. Dishwasher there. Residential refrigerator. And it has a little desk area right here. Right back into the bathroom you have a vanity. Electric toilet. Really nice shower right there. Another vanity. King size bed over here. It's on TV. And of course a washer and dryer.